The Baryonyx was a dinosaur that was under the radar for a long time before making a grand entrance in Ice Age 3, followed by another unforgettable appearance in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Although both movies distorted what it was really like, it helped make it one of the more famous dinosaurs, and rightly so. It first came to the attention of paleontologists in 1983, after a fossil enthusiast discovered a claw and some bones in the smoke jacks pit in the Weld Clay Formation in England. The remains were brought to paleontologists Alan Cherig, who recognized it belonged to a theropod. He ordered an excavation of the pit, which revealed more remains, recovering about 65% of the skeleton. With this, Cherig and his colleague, Angela Milner, realized they were dealing with a new genus and species, and in 1986, they created the name Baryonyx, meaning Strong Claw, and gave it the species name Walkery, a nod to the man who discovered it. After this, more remains were found in the UK, as well as Iberia helping scientists establish a fairly good idea on the nature of the Baryonyx. It was a theropod of medium size that is estimated to have been between 7.5 and 10 meters or 25 and 33 feet in length while reaching 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet in hip height and weighing between 1.2 and 2 tons. Its size makes it a medium sized spinosaurid, the family to which it belonged. And like other spinosaurids, it also had a very unique and special skull. The Baryonyx's skull in its entirety was about 91 to 95 centimeters or 36 to 37 inches long. The front section formed a snout that was elongated and narrow and was likened to the snout of a gharial. Furthermore, the skull bore nostrils which were far back from the front of its mouth, suggesting that the head was submerged quite often. The skull structure was the first sign of an unusual diet, but even more evidence was portrayed by its teeth. The mouth held numerous teeth, possibly numbering 96. They were long and thin and held the shape of recurved cones while also bearing fine but minimal hinting that they functioned by gripping and holding prey. Its jaw and teeth were integral for hunting, but were not the only tools it had, because as the meaning of its name implies, the Baryonyx also had impressive claws. Its arms, which were proportionally normal in size for a theropod, each had three claws, with the first finger having a huge one, measuring 31 centimeters or 12 inches in length, while the other claws were much smaller. Its claws and fingers were attached to robust forelimbs, another commonality in Spinosaurids, and with the characteristics of its claws, forelimbs, teeth, and skull, paleontologists realized it had a highly unique diet, fish. This is a trait that is actually uncommon in dinosaurs. In fact, the Baryonyx was the first theropod dinosaur confirmed to have been predominantly a piscivore. In 1997, the stomach contents of a Baryonyx provided direct evidence containing the remains of an ancient fish, the Lepidotes. Afterwards, there were no arguments on whether it ate fish, but on how it obtained the fish was another story. Cherig believed that the Baryonyx caught medium and large fish by standing on the water's edge and sparing them with its large claws before depositing the fish into its mouth. This is arguably the most popular theory, however others have challenged it, with some suggesting that it would sideswipe the fish with its mouth and only after impale them with its claws, and then use the claws like a kebab skewer. There were also other ideas on how it hunted, as another peculiar find in the stomach contents was a dinosaur, a juvenile iguanodontid. The the discovery that it also, at least in part, consumed other dinosaurs led to a mix of theories, with some believing it was both an active land and aquatic hunter, while others thought it did hunt fish but did not actively hunt terrestrial dinosaurs, rather scavenging them. Those who believe the iguanodontid was already dead suggest that the baryonyx's mouth was too weak to hunt and that its claws were better designed for handling fish, not bringing down large prey. However, those who theorize it did also actively hunt land animals propose that the arms and claws were powerful enough to handle fish and bring down large prey by tearing them apart with this enlarged claw. The rest of its body was also quite unique as some believe that its body was designed for a semi-aquatic life. 
It's commonly thought that Spinosaurids in general spent long durations submerged, and a study on Baryonyx found that its bones were structured in a way that would allow it to dive underwater, aiding this theory. Its muscular legs and powerful tail could have been used as its main source of locomotion. Furthermore, one partial skeleton was found with an elongated neural spine, similar to the elongation found in other Spinosaurid spines, although less developed. Some paleontologists think this spine would have formed a hump, which it would have used for mobility in the water, or for thermal regulation and display purposes. Hump or not, it's clear that with its claws, arms, and jaw, the Baryonyx was well equipped for its habitat, the UK and Iberia, where it lived roughly 130 to 125 million years ago during the early Cretaceous. The UK has been the better study of the two into what it would have been like back then, and the area that corresponds to where Baryonyx lived is believed to have consisted of mudflats and marshes, creating the perfect hunting grounds. The waters of this habitat were shallow and brackish, with fresh water Water also present via rivers. Forests were situated close by the water and had a high propensity of ferns, horsetails, and conifers, a reflection of the subtropical climate in which the Baryonyx lived. It also wouldn't have lived alone, as other dinosaurs in this area included Iguanodontia, including the Iguanodon, and sauropods, as well as crocodiles, pterosaurs, lizards, amphibians, sharks, and bony fish. Furthermore, it's believed to have potentially have lived with a host of other dinosaurs, although some argue not, as certain paleontologists think it lived on a piece of isolated land that was cut off by water. However, if connected to other areas, then it would have also coexisted with Hypsilophodon, Valdosaurus, the Ornithopsis, Eucomeritus, Chondrosteosaurus, and Polacanthus. Additionally, it wouldn't have been the only theropod, as the formation has yielded a host of others, eight and counting, which included Neobenator, Eotyrannus, Aristosuchus, Ornithodesmus, and even two other spinosaurids, the Riparobenator and Ceratosuchops, which were comparable in size to the Baryonyx. It's believed that the climate of the time would have benefited a carnivorous theropod, and specifically, one with a piscivore diet. Explain the high number of Spinosaurids. Despite potentially living with an abundance of other predators, it's believed that the Baryonyx would have for the most part been left alone, as paleontologists think that each had their own niches, and for the Spinosaurids, a niche within a niche, perhaps preferring to hunt during different times of the day, or having their own select parts of the habitat to themselves. The Baryonyx is definitely one fascinating dinosaur, who has not only contributed to the big screen, but to our understanding of Spinosaurids and their diets.